The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. What's happening, Thursday Think Tank? Uh, we're just taking a look at the qu or at the uh, attendee list right before we jumped on the call here, and uh, see a lot of uh, a lot of names we didn't recognize in there, which is really cool. But uh, I, I strongly suspect that I may have just sent a reminder email out to. Uh, some non-project loyalty owners. Uh, if that's the case, welcome to the call. And uh, we can certainly put you in touch with a place to get uh, project loyalty. So Edge on the call with me, as always, my partner Ed Hopkins, the master, master head super, what do you want to be called, man? What's the title? We should give you a title right now, live on the call. What do you think? Oh, just call me... Mr. Ed, I don't care. Who's we'll still <laughs> Mr. Ed? I'm having a case of the Mondays, man. <laughs> I hear you. Me too. Um, but that's uh, we'll, we'll, regardless of what we're going to call Ed going forward. Uh, <laughs> Ed's got on the screen here Project Loyalty. There's some updates that we need to go through um, with you guys, and then Ed's going to go through uh, setting up some network stuff here too. So this should be a good call. We'll take Q and A at the end for a little while. And uh, those that are late can watch the replays. So I'm just going to get out of the way here for a little bit, Ed, and let you do your thing. All right. Happy Thanksgiving to all those in Canada. Um, today is their Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Somebody told me about that on Friday after we rescheduled, and I was like, well, I can't reschedule twice in a half hour. But <laughs> it is what it is. All right. I guess uh, what I'll go through first, Dave, uh, is some of the new features that you'll find inside of your system today if you update. Um, a lot of you, let me slide over this over here. Remember your second page of your loyalty, this is after they check in. Um, all your deals will appear down here and sometimes uh, your customers will need to slide depending on how much content you're putting inside of your uh, your claim content inside your settings. So we've created a solution that I think you guys are going to love. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is what we've done to the devices. And it's not a major change. Um, it's actually pretty minor. We've added these little hashtags here. And what happens when you click on this, it'll give you the option of how you want to have that page to the claim center appear. Obviously, we have the default layout, which I just showed you. We could do single grid, double grid, and triple grid. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you is what the single grid looks like. I'll slide this on over into the picture. And what's going to happen here is you're going to have all your standard content just like you normally do. This is the thank you or the welcome back content. And then all of your uh, deals will appear consecutively in a row going down. Now, in the grid system, whether you're using single, double, or triple, there is a sticky at the very bottom, which is essentially their stats and they have the button where they can click if they're all done doing what they need to do on this page. And they can also have all their account information texted to them if they click on the send info button. And what you're seeing here, like I said before, is the one deal grid. Uh, next is the two deal grid. And it's going to look something like this. No matter how you have your uh, deals inside your system, they're always going to go one, one, two, three, four, left, right, left, right. And all the way down until it reaches the last deal that you have set up to show. Um, same thing with a sticky, everything else stays the same, just the grid changes here. Uh, lastly, I'm going to show you the third, the three grid system. I'll slide this over. And this is what it looks like in three grid. So obviously you can fit more deals on one page using this system um, with the three grid than the two single or the default. Um, you just got to be aware when you're creating your, your deals, uh, when you set your deal settings, make sure that your content is small enough. If you're, if you're using huge pictures like 600 pixels wide, it's probably going to look like a debacle. Um, we highly recommend when you add pictures to your deal uh, content is that you, you have a percentage set for width as opposed to pixels. And this will resolve and make resolve any issues that we'll have with resizing. Um, it will make it responses whether, responsive whether you're using single grid, double grid, or triple grid. And that's the new uh, deal grid system. So I think some of you are going to love that. And 
Ed, show them where to access that one more time, where, the, where that setting's been added and what it looks yeah, like. I'll go into the live system here, and you're going to go into um, devices, and you're just going to pop over here to the far right of the device that you're using, select the grid, and then choose which grid you want to use. By default, when you update, it's automatically going to have your old default layout already set up, so you don't have to worry about things getting all screwed up as soon as you update. Um, everything is going to be still the same until you make any changes here. And then some more stuff that we've added. Uh, let me go over the co-reg system. All right, let me show you where this is located. If you go into your location, and in my case, I'm using Dave's Hot Rock Cafe, you go into your schedules, and you click on the little hash mark here. We've added a new tab called Co-Reg. And I'm going to go over one by one uh, what these items mean, and then I'm going to show you how they operate uh, and appear on the tablet. Uh, first thing you want to do is set your Co-Reg status active. Now, for some reason, you have Scratch and Win active along with Co-Reg. Co-Reg is always going to override the Scratch and Win. Um, so there's never going to be any conflicts there. Uh, you're going to set your Co-Reg BG background color. Essentially what this is, I might as well slide this over now. This is your background content here, or the color. See, I have it set to green. And then, uh, I'm going to, i got too much stuff open here. Here we go. All right, next is the start countdown. So as soon as they enter their number on the tablet, instantly that's going to pop up right here, this light box, and it's going to have all the deals. Let me slide this over. It's going to look something like this, and we have all the deals that are going to appear. We have the top red, the core reg top content. We have the ad space area. This is where all your deals will propagate. And then we have our timer expiry, which will automatically refresh the screen if no action is taken on the customer's end. Um, Next is the show thanks con uh, content. This is how much time elapses after they've selected their deal. And it's going to look something like this. As soon as they grab their deal, the other deals will disappear on the page. And then it's going to show some thanks content highlighted in green here. So your ad advertising area is always going to remain the same. And the core reg content is always going to be static. Next. You're going to choose the deals that you want to appear inside your Co-Reg. Um, what you do is just grab from your list, and then if you want it to remain on that page till it's 100% permanently distributed, so let's say if you have that deal set to the deal limit to 100 claims, uh, this will keep it running and running and running on that Co-Reg page until it's fully, uh, for example, if I have it set for 100, until all 100 are claimed. If you set this to no, then obviously it's just going to be totally random. Now the scale, inner scale of 1 to 100 is the importance of the deal. Um, what's going to happen is, let's say if you have, I think it shows a maximum of five deals on that Co-Reg page. Uh, once those appear, they're obviously going to be random along with the deals that are not 100% permanently distributed. If you, the higher the scale you set here, for example, to 100, the more often that deal will appear inside the system. So uh, there might be some cases where you have 10 deals that are running through uh, the co-reg. Um, the higher the scale, the more often it's going to appear. I think that makes sense. Did I say that right, Dave? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way it's, it's not really going to work if you only have four, four deals. If, if, if you only have four deals set up, obviously those four deals are always going to show. But right. the more deals you have past the five, then it's going to show the importance of that deal to show up. Yeah, the way to think of it is how many times out of 100 views do you want it to show? You know, and the and the, the fuller the network gets, the, the more important that gets. You know. Correct. And then when you're uh, whenever you set that up, just hit done, and it's automatically added to your list. Easy as that. All right, and show them where we are, Ed. Where's the co all the co-reg stuff? It's on a new tab. When you're editing, it's go ahead. It's always going to be in the schedule. So let me uh, go to my location here, Dave's Hot Red Cafe. 
I go to my schedule and I do this drop down right here under action and then click on the tab co reg. Perfect. Uh, let me go over the content here yep. real quick. <clears throat> uh, we have the co reg top, top content. This is static on each page of the co reg. That's the first page being the all deal display and the second page being the claim display. Um, the next is the countdown timer contents. This is what appears at the very bottom of the first page open uh, co reg. And after that, this disappears. So if you put timer here and then the timer up here, it's only going to appear on that first page. After that, it disappears once that claim is made. Uh, the claim thanks content, this can be any content that you want. If you want to display the name of the deal that was just selected, just do percent deal percent. And as far as structuring everything underneath your co reg top content, um, just think of it this way. Um, these are not going to appear on the first page. These don't appear to the second page. This is going to appear on both pages. So what I, what I, essentially what I did is, once that claim is made, I have the thanks appearing above the deal and below the deal image. And the timer never shows on the second page. And it's all automatic once you put these tags in. And that's uh, the co-reg. And that obviously we'll handle any questions um, later on, but I'm going to jump to the next feature that we added. And this is uh, the all phones compatibility. Uh, this is located under mobile settings inside your location. Uh, then you're going to click on SMS settings. And then if you want to enable this, you just check this off. And this is what happens when somebody comes through the tablet for the very first time. Um, they're going to get a welcome message. Uh, and they're also going to get a message that says, do you have a smartphone? If they say uh, no, they're then going to get a, a SMS that says, what is your name? And then they're going to respond to that. And then what is your email? So this way we can still collect the necessary da data that's required so we can send them emails uh, in the future. And what's also going to happen when somebody comes through and claims a deal once they've joined, uh, any SMS that they normally get, they're also going to get emailed that same information. So if there's a bit.ly link inside the SMS, that's also going to be sent via email. It's an exact mirror of the SMS system. Sweet. And I think there was one more thing. We did some improvements. Uh, there's just so much open right now. We did some improvements on the glider as well. Uh, that's in the, co uh, not the co reg but the um, the network mode, and I'll show you that here in a second. Go ahead, Dave. Nope, nothing. Keep going. Um, what I'll do is I'll take all these images here. I'm going to paste these into the chat box so you guys can look at them. And paste that in there. Let me know if this appears for you guys. You guys see all that? Uh, probably came out all, all formatted, all screwy. <clears throat> okay, next, uh, shall we get into the uh, creating a network? Yeah, let's see. Uh, let me just take a quick look through the question marks. So, related to the co reg, so if a person, once a person chooses one of the co reg offers, will that deal automatically stop showing to them? It all depends on how the uh, reward is actually set up. Um, for example, let me go into one of these rewards to show you. Uh, right here, deal can be redeemed. Um, if this is set for once per month per person, then that's only going to appear once per month once they've claimed that. Uh, there's also two other options or three other options here, once forever per person, um, once per week per person, and once per day per person. Perfect. And let's see, Robert, I see your question about the viral sharing. Let's get back to that one later. And Donna says, what are these links for that you just sent us, Ed? Oh, those are just all the, the same images that I use for the screencast, all these. Gotcha. For reference. Wonderful. All right, rock on. Okay, uh, so we're going to get into uh, creating an ad network, and it's actually very simple. Um, in this case, what I did is I, I've already renamed this particular location Dave's Hot Red Cafe Mall, um, just just for pretend. Uh, so we're going to add his network. This is a mall. Uh, I'm going to call this Dave's Mall. 
And then I got to choose the parent that's going to be part of this network. And I'm going to find Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall. And I'm going to hit submit. And now we have our parent. Now the next thing that we're going to do uh, is we're going to drag the, the children underneath the parent. These are essentially the locations that are going to be operating under the hospices of Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall. Um, what's going to happen is as soon as I drag over these deals, like for example, let me go to Green Golf Nation here, you're going to see it already has its own layout and all that good stuff. But if I come back here and I drop Green Golf Nation as a child underneath Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall, this will let me, there we go. Now if I go to Green Golf Nation, now I have the branding of Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall. And everything is inherited, including the device that's attached to Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall. Um, still, each location still has its individual rewards and its own individual schedules. Now some of you uh, may be using several different kinds of tablets. When you click on Green Golf Nation, let's say they're using uh, a 10-inch tablet as opposed to a 7-inch tablet, you could still do the override uh, with the tablet size on the first check-in. And I'd have to close, I have to find a deal that I have not. Let me see if I can use this example here. Keep right here. Um, so let's say Totally Naltastic is using a 10-inch tablet as opposed to a 7-inch tablet. You can still override, you put in the password, and then choose their default device that they're going to use. Um, so you can completely override the parent device if you wanted to. Uh, so you can drag in all these deals. These are all children of the parent. Now, if I go to Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall, I put in my password here. Submit. Now all the businesses that are in my network will appear in this glider right here. Um, it's probably going to take a second here to load, but then they start gliding. And then any deals that the parent is going to set up, ideally what's going to happen with those, let me jump over here. When you set up rewards for Dave's Hot Rod Cafe Mall, they're not going to be rewards for this particular business because the mall may not be offering a, a product or service. They're doing this for their, their tenants inside of their mall. So what could happen is once you're setting up the deals for this location, you could actually probably steal deals from those other locations. So let's take uh, one free class lesson. Now we've added the ability to, uh, once somebody comes through that tablet, they're going to see this one free class lesson for karate. And if they've never, ever been to that, that uh, particular place of business, as soon as that deal is claimed, they're instantly, instantly going to be signed up for their tablet under a join. So it's going to ask them to join the karate club in this particular instance when they go through the system. All right, which brings up, um, Rick's got in the question box here, so does a child business need to have a tablet for people to redeem an offer? No, absolutely. Yes. Well, they do, Dave. They do need to have a tablet. You can, you can run almost like a Coreg all your rewards if you really wanted to. But ideally, if you want to have the ability for uh, a customer to join another person's list, they should, ideally they, they would want to have a tablet. That's the best case scenario. Right, but if we're putting the deal in the same like we're doing with Jason, if we're putting the deals all under one roof anyway. So in other words, if inside of the mobile, the date of Dave's Hot Rod Cafe, as long as we're willing to have the golf deal delivered right in there and co-mingle with the points, then another tablet is not required. You're, you're correct in that, in that situation, yes. Okay. So... That's I think what I think that confusion brought the question on so because I was confused by it too so that was a good set I'll, I'll continue. Yeah, you're more than welcome at any time to create rewards um, that are of locations that don't have a tablet. Um, you're just not going to have that ability to 
have the list sent over to a new uh, a new location in that instance. That way, you, you're not really building a list for somebody else if you don't have their location set up. You're building it for yourself. Right. Um, okay. Um, another thing is whenever you have these other uh, locations set up, all the deals that are set up as third-party deals, let me jump over here. So which deal did we just add here? Let's add a third-party deal. Come down here. Let's do free haircut punch card. As soon as I add that free haircut punch card, it's going to instantly appear inside of the mobile wallet of the customer. Um, now you may have separate categories set up under this pizza place here. It could be uh, uh, large pizza, small pizzas as your categories, but there's, it's going to automatically add a third category called special offers. And in this case, this is where the free haircut would appear. Um, and if that person did have a location with a tablet, once that deal was claimed, they would instantly be joined into that new business location. Any questions on that? Anybody confused? Uh, let's see. I don't see any questions specifically on that. Daryl says it seems so advanced. Is there step-by-step -step video training uh, set up? With the exception of these new features that we're debuting on the call today, Daryl, there is video training. Um, the best bet, and this is tough to even demonstrate on Ed's dev account here because we've got so many things going on. Your best bet is to install this, load the default Dave's Hot Rod campaign, look at every single tab in it and see how it's set up and then run through it and you'll understand how it works. Um, it's an extremely powerful piece of software, so there is a learning curve with it, but that's really the best way is to install it per the videos or the video that's in the members area and open the default Dave's Hot Rod Cafe campaign and look around and start pairing up what WYSIWYGs control what portion of the screen in your head and... Uh, Try it. Put your phone number through it. Pull it up on the screen and put your phone number through it. Yeah, Dave, I also have some video, a video course coming out. It's going to be basically covering um, project loyalty for dummies and, and wrecking ball SMS for dummies. And it's just going to go over the, the basic functionality aspects to actually get a campaign running uh, within 15 minutes of actually installing the system. Um, obviously, the best way, um, if you have a new, new client that you want to have, uh, set up as a demo right away. Uh, we have what we called here uh, the locations gallery. You can come in here, and for example, let's say you have approached a nail slot. You can come in here and we put the name of whoever the nail salon is. Carrie's Nail Salon. And then we can copy the default device which is located on our server. You definitely want to bring that over. You want to add it as a new location. Hit submit. And now you have a, a location that's already configured and ready to go. Uh, once I come to this page, ah, I got to activate it. So I'm going to deactivate this one, activate this one. Now I got totally no tastic. Test is my password. And the test is going to be password for all the gallery uh, locations that are in there and they should be able to come in here and be able to start demoing right away as long as you have your SMS settings set up which I think I do bingo ready right out of the box how do you like that perfect yeah so it uh, just get in there commit to spending a little bit of time with it um, it, it looks a bit overwhelming and daunting, but it's fairly intuitive as you get into it. So, uh, James says, one, can I buy the, can the loyalty software be purchased without being a member of the think tank? Um, it can, James, but it's more expensive that way. And two, in our marketing material, can we reference any major company using the same or similar software with their loyalty program? We're working on putting together, um, 
approved contacts so we can do just that for you guys but we don't have that ready to go yet uh, Robert says does the customer have to bookmark the mobile wallet or can an icon be loaded to look like an app on the phone um, as of right now Robert we do not have internal bookmarking uh, but you could instruct the customer how to do it but every time there's interaction that requires them to access that page if they haven't bookmarked it they're going to get a text and an email about it anyway um, so it's it's, it's always going to send them to, and it's always going to send them to their mobile wallet too yeah it, it's it, it can, they can't get lost in the shuffle because of the way the system's designed um, but like a pop-up bookmarker is something that I'd like to get into the system, but it's not in there now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and if you go into your, let me just say this, Dave. Uh, if you go into your reward settings here, uh, the content settings, if you go to the very bottom, uh, the SMS to claim prize, uh, to show that URL to claim their prize, all you do is percent P URL percent, and it's going to send them to that deal. But there's also a button at the very top left, which is the home page, it takes them right to their account. Uh, any time when they visit any of their mobile pages, no login is required. They have their own secure encrypted access link. Perfect. Uh, let's see. How soon will the For Dummies training be available? Rick says great ideas on that videos on the For Dummies. That's that. People are really looking forward to that. Well, I'll get those up as soon as the dummy's done doing them. As soon as the dummy's done doing them. <laughs> All right, uh, Joe wants to know in this scenario, Dave's Mall, my ice cream shop, doesn't mind uh, Dave's banner at the top, but wants his banner below it, if not all the other businesses. So uh, what functionality control with the new grid system that is built into the, 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 the co-reg? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, there, there is no functionality like that. I think uh, I talked to you, I think, inside of the... Uh, support desk. Um, we're working on this week where if you don't want to have any competing offers uh, inside of your logo glider for any particular location, say if I go to Green Golf Nation here and you'll see every logo. Now let's say Karate Kids um, was a competitor. I don't want them obviously appearing on my tablet. So we're going to add that functionality where you can uh, remove particular logos from your slider. Um, currently right now if you need to remove any particular logo or don't want to or don't want to have want want to show up. What you do is just come in here, go under your loyalty logo, and just put a space in here and hit insert, and it'll totally kill that image. All right. Uh, let's see. Jared wants to know. So when you do the network, are all the points tallied together or not? No, they're not, um, and that wouldn't work, and that definitely would not work. Um, there's in that in that particular example that he just said, one business would always really be hurting. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do we have to use Wrecking Ball, or can we use any SMS service, Dale? We, um, the you can hook to Wrecking Ball, but Wrecking Ball is not required, and this hooks to Twilio. Uh, Tropo and our Woot Tech short code service. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'm presenting to a business manager who oversees a golf club or restaurant, not hotel. How do I loop all three? I don't know we can get into that deep a business discussion on this call, Daniel. Um, is he but, saying that there's there's one master company that has children, like we're yeah, pretty much setting up yeah. with a network? Well, even if it's a business manager who oversees three different places, I think it's still three different campaigns. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that. Uh, Daniel, punch that in support, and we'll see if we can't get to that on the Thursday think tank call this week. I'll yeah, talk if his concern is, David, his concern is. Uh, the ability to, to cross promote, you could still do that just through the reward system itself by adding a third party deal. 
Right, and I guess that's what I'm I'm thinking is mechanically, Daniel, it's not a problem on our end. I guess it's uh, really more of a dialing in the business model, but knowing that, yeah, the system's going to support it no matter what that business model looks like. So, uh, let's see. Uh, the updates, Ed, are going out queued, I'm assuming. Yes, they are. Yeah, so half of you have the update, half of you don't. They go out in batches, so to hang out, you should be able to hit the update button in 12 hours tops, something like that. So if you don't see the update, uh, log out, log back in a little later, and you probably will. So let's see. Robert says, what are we referring to when you say mobile wallet? Let me um, take them to a, a mobile Page here. Okay, I got screenshots if you don't have one handy. I might need to register here. Yeah, let me finish my registration here. This is essentially, uh, after they join, they're going to get a, a bit.ly link, which is going to take them to their own URL to register. Uh, they're going to put in their information. They're so, going to complete their registration. So they'd be, they'd be looking at this on their phone. This would be the mobile wallet. Exactly, and I guess if I squeeze this, right. it'll make he, more sense. Yeah, he hasn't seen it before, so. <laughs> okay, so uh, they're going to click, they're going to put their name in, they're going to put their email in, they're going to click on complete registration, they're going to get the terms and conditions automatically fed into it if you're using short code. They're going to click on I understand. Then they're going to get the option. If they want to earn more points, they can post uh, the business information on their Facebook wall, uh, or they can just go right to their account. And then this is essentially what their mobile wallet is. It gives them all their data about their account, lifetime points, current balance, points earned today, lifetime deals claimed, and how many deals claimed today. Uh, there is a, a link where they can get some more deals that they may qualify for. Uh, they still have that option to post on Facebook if they haven't done so already. And they can see all the deals that they've already claimed, in case there's none because I just joined. Uh, there's an About Us, which shows the business information, uh, their phone number, they can email the business, a link to their website, any business events that they may have going on at any time, and there's also a map and Facebook and Twitter links as well. Excellent. Um, and, and real quickly, Ed, if we go back to the admin and show them where the Facebook information is set. Um, so there's, there's two places, guys, that Facebook can be used. Once on that initial registration, uh, you can collect name and email or register with Facebook. And then we're constantly incentivizing them to share on Facebook and earn more points from within the mobile wallet. Correct. And this is the, uh, the viral share content. This is located in the mobile settings, Facebook share settings. You're going to set your share title, your share picture, and your share caption. And then once that's posted on uh, a Facebook wall, I think all three of these actually become clickable links uh, inside of Facebook. And then you have your, your share description. And then there's the option where, let's say, one of your friends uh, clicks on the link that's in your wall. They're taken to a page that has the viral website content. And essentially what this does is it signs them up without a tablet. Uh, so they can just go in here, they can join. The same process as if they went into the store and entered their numbers in the tablet, they can join, but they just can't check in on this join page. Uh, let me show the other location where they can set their viral reward settings. You go into rewards here, and we go to Facebook share settings inside of the reward, and here's the same settings. It's, it works exactly like the business share settings all the same stuff. And you can actually, once somebody clicks on that deal, you can actually say, hey, how would you like to have one of Dave's burgers? Because you're doing the deal by particular reward right here. Perfect. Um, let's see. So Robert says, I have a question about waitress mode. Is it possible to have a mobile number in waitress mode and have that number count as a check-in towards their check-in points. Uh, I, don't, I may not understand what he's, what he's trying to set, trying to accomplish there. Is this something that it's not doing, or something that he needs information on? 
I don't know. That was I read everything that was punched in there. Uh, any known bugs with the image uploader, Ed, that have been reported? Uh, let with me the, try it. With the library <laughs> thing? I don't think so. Usually what happens is if you don't have uh, permissions set to 777 um, for your, for example, like backgrounds, like I should be able to come over here, click on upload, pick any file here. Let's go over here. And it uploaded fine. So this sounds like a permissions issue um, on your server. Just send us a, a support ticket and we'll have our servers take a look at that for you. Yeah, and put all your cPanel information and things of that nature in there too. Um, Zeke said he went through the video on how to set up the scratch and save, but he's not getting the light box to come up. Could you show that real quick, Ed? Absolutely. All right, let me grab one of these point schedules here. I guess we can use the same one. Actually, why don't I go to one that's already created? How about that? Scratch and save right here. Actually, let me do something else here. I don't think there's one set up there. So I don't want to go through the creating the entire thing. I'd rather just kind of show it one by one. Uh, let me go into this one. Scratch and save. There we go. All right, what you're going to do, uh, first you want to do your check-ins, rules, and contests. Um, you're going to set your allowable check-ins per day. Obviously, the default's always going to be one. Uh, you want to set your special offer here. So let's do every X is a winner. So what this means is every tenth person that comes through the system is going to get the win ticket. Uh, you're going to set your winner options. In this case, we're going to give a reward instead of doing a send SMS, and you choose the reward that you want to assign. In this case, we want to set the pizza deal. Hit save and open that back up again. Go to your scratch and win. You're going to set this to active. You're going to set your reveal percentage uh, when that ticket is scratched. So once 50% of that image disappears from their finger scratching over it, uh, it's automatically going to reveal the whole ticket that's underneath it. Uh, you're going to set your contents BG color. This is the light box color. This is the countdown. This is how much time they have to scratch their ticket. And then once the ticket is 100% scratched, um, this is how much time uh, displays the actual winning information. You're going to choose your images, your foreground, your loser image, and your winner image from the library. And then, obviously, you're going to set your, your top content. And you want to make sure when you're doing your content that you have the percent win underscore lose percent merge tag. And you're going to want to have this, the percent scratch percent merge tag. Otherwise, your ticket's not going to appear unless you have this merge tag there. And then you can just reissue those same merge tags underneath it. And you want to have the timer as well. Um, and if you use the deals that are already made for us in the gallery, made for you in the gallery, um, you can just use the same content that I've already ha I've made for you inside the scratch and win. But I think the issue that he might have had is right here in the check-in rules. He might not have set his contest. Okay. All right, let's see. So are we restricted to local cities? Can I send these around the country to various clients? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Can you remind us what are the additional charges? Yeah, you get uh, you get a location for, you get five locations for being part for being an active Thursday think tank member. You get one additional location for each month you've been an active Thursday Think Tank member. And above that, additional location credits are $7 per location per month. Uh, let's see. Robert says, so it has a Facebook Connect feature. That would be much easier to connect than manually into your info. Yes, it does. Um, can you get back to a mobile screen? Oh, uh, sure. Just real quick. And yeah, right here. Let me see if I can join it here. 
go to my account, post on Facebook, earn some more points. Yeah, and it's, ask me, it's on the registration screen too, Robert. It was uh, just under one of the uh, question boxes there. Yeah, usually what's going to happen here, you'll, you're going to log in, and then it's going to ask you to accept the app. But since I've already gone through this process a thousand times, it's probably just going to take me right to the mobile page. Uh, let me finish this. Continue. Oh, very good. It did ask me. So I'm going to say this is cool. I'm going to share it. And then it takes me back to my account. In that case, I would have already been just signed in by Facebook and joined. And then uh, obviously see the Facebook share button's gone now because I've already done that entire process. Yeah. So it appears on the uh, on the main registration screen. You can either do name and email or a Facebook connect. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's a long one. Four main benefits to project loyalty itself. It would be great to have an infographic. Yeah, there, we could. I could put that together. You know, we put the infographic builder kit in the Thursday think tank for all you guys too. So. Um, that's a pretty slick way to come up with an infographic fairly quickly. Um, but if you want to send me these in support, um, we can put it on our to-do list for sure. Um, hey Dave, Lydia just asked, where is the content that um, I just posted to my Facebook wall? It's right here under your mobile settings, Facebook share settings. It's all right here. Perfect. And Paulette says, David, is there a demo environment such as Dave's Cafe that we can use to demo to our clients? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's what we're saying. Just install the software and Dave's, all those campaigns will be there ready to demo. Uh, let's see. Uh, long, long question from Kenny about truck stops. Short answer, yes, it's possible, Kenny. Uh, it's not only possible, but it's pretty doable. Uh, Hanif says, how do we get a, a, a customer to sign up using their phone? Is there a way to set up a keyword to text in to join? The, there is, if you, have, if you have Wrecking Ball SMS, you can join via keyword. Um, but keep in mind that the idea here is that they're entering their phone number into a tablet. So if you have the Wrecking Ball SMS system, you can couple it to Project Loyalty, and then you can join Loyalty via keyword. Um, yeah, because there are some instances where a business will be on location somewhere. It could be like an event um, outside of their uh, actual business. Um, in that case, they can use text to join, and that'll get them joined in. And the settings are found under Mobile Settings, SMS Settings. You're going to put your Wrecking Ball URL, um, for those of you that have Wrecking Ball, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the automatic key generation under the admin settings. You put in your key, you put in the colon, and then you put the keyword after that of the actual campaign you want them to be signed under. Perfect. James says, Dave, what if a business doesn't have Wi-Fi? How do we get them on loyalty? You know, James, if there's a reason to do it, well, then you just got to up their rate a little bit and get a mobile hotspot in there. But I would encourage you to look real hard at uh, a business that doesn't have Wi-Fi and uh, be concerned as to whether or not you should just move on to the majority of businesses out there that do. Um, but there's ways to do it if you need to with a mobile hotspot, you know. Um, and, and most businesses do have either either Wi-Fi or hardwired cable internet, and all you need is a, is a Wi-Fi router, and those are like 25 bucks on Tiger Direct. Yeah, Tom says we missed part of the webinar to just discuss uh, the smartphone detection functionality. Yep, we did. Uh, it's the first hat part of the replay, Tom. Let's see. Uh, Facebook app setup is their training that goes over how to set this up. Can you show them where the PDF is, Ed, on how uh, to set oh, up yeah. your Facebook app? Yes. You're going to go into your settings, and then on the very first page under general settings, 
There's a Facebook app ID and a Facebook app secret. There's instructions under this PDF right next to it. Excellent. And you always want to make sure before deployment of your app, make sure you take it out of sandbox mode. Got it. Okay, Robert says, on my previous question on Waitress mode, right now I believe Waitress mode only works with punch card campaigns. I want a local Chinese restaurant delivery guide to be able to register points towards that Chinese restaurant points campaign because I have campaigns for that restaurant for points, not punch cards. So in other words, can the delivery guy carry around a tablet and enter people's phone numbers, I think is what we're looking at here. Right, Robert? Can he, can he do it on a cell phone? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he could probably just have the tablet display right on his cell phone. Right. And just punch in the numbers just like a normal person would coming in the store would do. Yeah, and just set it up so the keypad is, you know, if that's all if that's all you're going to do, that would be a, a, a good, great way to accomplish that. Have you tried uh, just doing it in um, portrait mode, Robert? You said it doesn't fit on a cell phone. Well, you would have to set up a really a device for it, right, Ed? Yeah, set up your own device with just a check-in button. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, dumb question: Is there ideal size tablet to run loyalty on? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you can make it work on anything. So. Is it necessary to provide? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, it works really good on a seven, eight-inch tablets, but it looks damn awesome on a ten-inch. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it's really it's about the situation. Um, is it necessary to provide my Facebook details when installing Project Loyalty? It doesn't sound like it. No, only if you want to use the Facebook integration portions of it. Uh, Wes says, is Wrecking Ball part of the Thursday Think Tank? No, it is not. There's a separate, uh, Wrecking Ball is a separate product from the Thursday Think Tank. Uh, how many of you, I, I know, I think I sent the email to the wrong list. How many of you are not Thursday Think Tank members on the call? Just give me a no if you're not a Thursday Think Tank member to see if I even need to address this out loud. It's okay. I'm not trying to bust you out or nothing. I, I emailed the webinar link to everybody by accident. So if you're not a Thursday Think Tank member, let me know. Okay. Um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, well, here's the deal, guys. Uh, Thursday Think Tank prices are going up again um, in one week. And right now... Thursday Think Tank includes Project Loyalty, as we just described. Um, we think within possibly 30 days, Thursday Think Tank membership will no longer include Project Loyalty. Don't worry, you guys will all be grandfathered in. Um, but we're going to start selling Project Loyalty for a much, much, much higher price, potentially, and as a separate product. So you guys will all be grandfathered in. But basically what I'm saying is if you're on this call and you're interested in Project Loyalty, uh, you literally have like six days to go to thursdaythinktank.com and join at this price point. Uh, it's $37 a month right now, Rick. And at the end of the week, going up... Um, by at least 10 bucks a month, and then within a couple of weeks, uh, Project Loyalty may not be included with Think Tank membership. So, uh, yeah, or, right now, or right the now price will be going Project up Loyalty, <laughs> Yeah, Project Loyalty is the flagship product inside Thursday Think Tank, but there is so much more in there. Yeah, that's an understatement for sure. So, um, yeah, go to ThursdayThinkTank.com. Love to have you come on board and and, and get using this thing. Yeah, it is a steal. You're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, there's some people that have really, really made us cognizant of the fact that we're truly giving the software away inside the Thursday Think Tank. So, well, obviously, the way we roll, we would, you guys will all be grandfathered in because that's what we told you when you joined. 
Um, but the price is going up on Project Loyalty, so that's what we're doing. Uh, what version, Ed, is current? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, version 1.10.14. Perfect. Um, what kiosks are you Michael, there's a couple of good paid ones for Android. There's a decent um, freebie for iPad, but we're building you an Android app specifically for project loyalty. Expect to have it done in a week. Let's see. Gordon says ThursdayThinkTank.com opens up a video, but no link to join. Is there a PayPal button somewhere? It actually shows up after like 30, 40 minutes of that video. Um, we did that for a reason. We're talking about the Total Town Takeover, which uses Project Loyalty in the background, and that was actually a replay of uh, a call we did with Jason Bell. So let it play in the background, and I think at like the half hour mark, the rest of the page shows up. So uh, let's see. Robert says, saw the info on stands. Where's the best deal to find on tablets? If you're looking for a 7-inch tablet, the best deal is Walmart, and you're looking for the next book, 7. They're 79 bucks, and they occasionally go on sale for 69 bucks. So go to walmart.com, 79, occasionally 69. Uh, let's see, does PL hey, have... Can I address a few things with the next book? You, please. <clears throat> Took liberties to do some massive testing the last couple of days of the next book, trying to replicate some of the issues that some of the users are having with the double digits coming up when you press the button, or just simple, just really laggy... Uh, just flow the entire process. And what I've learned just from just doing these couple of days of testing is if I had automatic updates enabled on my uh, tablet and it totally lags your tablet. Once I disabled that, things started flowing a lot better on the tablet. Same for the next book eight too. Yeah, and if you guys, you know, if you guys are going to run tablets as kiosks, I would highly recommend you disable everything you can except for what it's intended to do. It's just going to run cleaner, run. you know. Yeah, you know what, Dave? I even just for testing purposes, I I ran a dynamic background on the tablet and it still totally foobarred the, the kiosk. So something that simple can still just make it that that uncomfortable to use that tablet. So you want to have minimal resources running on that tablet. Yeah, correct. Uh, Robert said, I thought you guys had some sort of tab stand or the, the tablet stand combo. We put that in front. Of, there was there's not enough interest within the group um, on a single tablet for us to arrange a bulk buy. Is the bottom line. There's there's too many people have tablets and too many people using too many different things and all that kind of stuff. Um, the instructions that we've given in the past on the full screen mode uh, apply to the default Android browser, which has been what I've had the best luck with, uh, but Ed has some issues with it. But the bottom line is, is you guys need this app, kiosk app. And we're putting together a really, really simple but extremely powerful kiosk app for Android for you. Um, that's even going to turn the screen on and turn the screen off at certain times of the day. So, let's see. Uh, I know you're probably getting tired of this question, but any work on the Canadian shortcode? No, I wish I had something to tell you. Um, I will send an email out tomorrow and update everybody, but we have no news. It's simply a waiting game. Take comfort knowing that those of you that jumped in as founding members on the Canadian shortcode will be well taken care of. That's all I can tell you. I can't apologize enough. It's completely out of our control. I wish there was something we could do about it. 
yeah, that kind of caught us off guard and was active for about a week and a half. Right. And then they decided they wanted to start testing. That kind of blew me away. Yeah. We went through all of our testing. Everything was working fine. We were told it's live except for some virgin network spottiness. And then in order to get that resolved, it had to go back into pending mode. And uh, we weren't even told that was happening. So it's a disappointing experience, but there's nothing we can do about it. The bottom line is Virgin doesn't care one way or another about how quickly we get the short code enabled. So there, you know, there's just nothing we can do about it. So believe you me, as soon as it's live, you're going to know about it. Um, Steve says, can you show the recommended image sizes for things like the logos, banners, rewards, etc.? Basically, Steve, if you install the software, and just go into the image library, you could just download the image and actually use it for a template, right, Ed? Absolutely. You could do that. Yeah. Um, why people to get in the habit, though, when they create their rewards and their campaigns, like I said before, start using the percent feature of width. Well, I've, I've seen a bunch of your, your tablet demos, and a lot of you are using a 1,600 pixel wide logo. And that's the actual setting. So when it gets on the tablet, it's totally off the screen. Um, what you want to do is highlight your logo or the image inside your reward. You're going to come in here, set your width. And let's say I want this to be responsive. Do 45% on the width. And now it's always, no matter what size tablet you put it on, it's always going to be 45% of the width of the actual tablet. So get in the habit of using the percentage as opposed to pixels inside your image. Best right. practices, Dave. There you go. Chad just pushed this in here four times in a row. He must want me to read it. Some time ago when you started with this loyalty software, you had spoken about an outsourced part that would be served also if we chose. So what happened to that plan? I think that you're talking about concierge service. And if that's the case, we've tried a couple of times to formalize that, and there's just no good way to do it. We need to become intimate with your campaigns and your customers in order to set it up. So if you have an immediate need for it, please put in a support ticket. The more thorough, the better. Tell us everything that you need set up, and we'll get back to you on it pretty quickly. Ed, how did you get into the image editor again? Uh, all I did was highlight the image because I wanted to put focus on this image and click on the picture right here next to YouTube and it'll pop it right up. Bada bing, bada bang. Let's see. Did, I don't think I missed anything. I don't think I missed anything. Today's holiday in Canada. I think we got ETA on the Australian short code. Again, watch for an email tomorrow, Peter, but the same thing. Just in a holding pattern waiting. Nothing we can do about it. I, I wish we hadn't. All we did was tell you what we were told. And keep in mind that we were told, you know, we told these people we need to know. Don't give us a fictitious date. And uh, they did. But I guess that's part of the game. Like I said, rest assured, you'll be uh, in a really, really powerful position if you got in on one of our founding members. And we're going to take care of you with keywords and credits. So don't worry about it. Um, let's see. Other than deliverability issues for a bigger list, any reason long code can't be used with loyalty? Uh, no, it's just deliverability. I mean, you're technically out of compliance if you broadcast to that list, you know, so, um, but I don't think you'd probably have any problems other than deliverability. Let's see, David says you're dealing with a phone company, did you really expect the truth? Yeah, I guess that was foolish on my part. Uh, Dave, you didn't answer, what's the emulator? Um, Ed, show them why we built the emulator real quick. Uh, what this is, I'll, let me plug the URL again in the chat box so you guys can have it first. Okay, there you go. 
Um, what this is going to allow you to do is to plug in your device details. So let's say I have an Acer Iconia 10 inch and my resolution is 1024 pixels by 768. You're going to plug in your contest URL and click on emulate. And this is exactly how it's going to look on your tablet minus the top and bottom bars. Perfect. Um, Let me finish. <laughs> oh, did you drop a mic? Um, yeah, I dropped the mic. Uh, this will also allow you to do testing. You're creating new uh, locations, the size of everything. Uh, you can tweak the device uh, for the glider width, the pad width, the pad height, and the glider height. Just so you can know and test before you get to your place of business where you're going to be demoing this. So everything looks perfect. Perfect. Uh, let's see. I'm going to end on this one. KG sent in a ticket for tablet stand. Yeah, I responded to it earlier today, and we'll be putting you in touch with the person that you need to be in touch with here shortly after the webinar, so watch for it. Ed, did you have anything else you want to wrap up with? Otherwise, we'll get the replay processed. Look out for the dummy videos from the dummy. Look out for the dummy videos from the dummy. I like it. All right, guys, we'll wrap this up. Uh, I'll see you no later than Thursday. Watch your email for everything coming up this week. And uh, your update should be live shortly if it's not already. So uh, have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.